Hello everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this let's play of Shadows of Undren Tide. Last episode, we made our way into this final hall here and we happened to find a crevice, which happened to be filled with Formians. Basically, Tauric ant creatures. With a hive mind, basically all working under a single queen. We slaughtered our way through about half of them before the fact we weren't the chaos creatures, the slot, intrigued the queen. She stopped attacking us and alla and allowed uh, and basically gave us a crystal so that we could summon some help against the chaos creatures. I think perhaps it's time we go in. I believe we will need this crystal here. That must be the figure. Looks like she ran through the portal. Up, oh, and here they come. Okay, activate it. It's gone. Well, so much for that. And I got stunned. I don't know why it's gone now, but I don't like that. So much for having an army of ants on our side. Maybe it's because I ran out of here. I mean, that's possible. Here comes some more. Of course, he summoned another. Oh, shit. Okay, then. Just a sec. Alright. We can try this again, but Deacon, I'd like you to cast several of your buffing spells. Cast clarity on me. Thank you. Cast ghostly visage on yourself. Get it out of the way. Cast haste on me. And use your bard song. There goes that figure running through the portal again. Alright, get in there. You are the powerful one. You are the one who must die. Get away from Deacon! Well, you seem to have trouble hitting me, at least. Okay, this isn't going too bad. Oh good, he left Deacon alone. Well, the clarity's gone. Second, though, the image seemed to linger. Please attack, Deacon! Oh, wow. Didn't expect that. Deacon, does your bow have a chance of. Huh. Oh, he's using paralytic bolts. That explains it. Alright. That got rid of the last of the slotty. Mission accomplished. Boots of striding, potion of cat's grace, and another tongue. 
Uh, basically gives a con bonus plus two. Deacon, are you wearing any boots? You are. Boots of elven kind. Dexterity bonus. I think that's something you can keep. The move silently doesn't matter, but still. Open up the other door so we have it open. Give a rest, because I doubt we're going... It doesn't look like we're going to have any more things to fight. Okay, then. Drogan, you made it! I have made it. Not that this was a simple feat to accomplish. When Garrick contacted me, I was high deep in my own problems. So, um, who is you? I am Drogan, little one. Once I was teacher to Liam, but no longer. I don't believe we've met, you and I. Uh, heh, uh, nope, uh, we not meets. Me as Deacon, faithful cobalt companion to Liam, and scribe of his epic tale. Then I am very pleased to meet you, Deacon. Liam must be very lucky to have found such a loyal friend such as herself. You is nice, Dwarf. Deacon likes you. The enemy, the enemy behind all this has been hounding me for days now, just as I suspected she would. Devils and demons and such. The sort you've seen for yourself already, no doubt. She must assume I still have the Mithalar which you brought here. Fortunately, Ayala and I were able to find out what we needed to. And what is that? Our enemy is a powerful sorceress by the name of Huridus. Little is known of her personally, but we do know that she was once apprenticed to the dread lich Belferon. Ah, Belferon, the one whose hand you happen to have. Belferon had spent all of his extended lifetime learning of ancient Netheril and its artifacts, and he passed this knowledge on to his apprentices. The Harpers thought all of Belferon's art students were killed when he was. Apparently they were wrong. But now we know what the Huridus is after. She desires to obtain the power of the ancient Netherese mages for herself. Power beyond any magic practiced since the Empire's fall. This is why she seeks the Mithalar, and why she has come here. With Belferon's knowledge, Huridus is more than capable of attaining this goal. How could Huridus have escaped notice for so long? That is a good question, dear boy. At one time, Belferon reached a level of power that threatened all of Faerun, and the Harpers only barely destroyed him. That one of his students was able to escape the fate of the others and remain hidden for so long speaks much of her abilities. But for all of the things we don't know about Huridus, we can assume that her goal is the same as Belferon's. With luck, she can be defeated as he was. And you waited all this time to inform me of this? Nonsense, dear boy! I only acquired this information recently myself. I would have come to you sooner, but there was otherworldly magic in operation preventing me from teleporting. When I sensed the source of the magic had been killed and the spells dropped, I teleported here. I teleported there. Well, here. I figured you must be the reason, and I was right. But what is Eurydice doing in these ruins? I assume Garrick told you that what this ruin's original purpose was, yes? It contains portals that the ancient Netherese used to travel between their fortresses and flying cities. Huridus obviously intends to use these portals to reach another ruin, somewhere untouched, most like, and full of the, all the artifacts she could possibly want. We must stop her. Then we're too late. She's already used this portal. What? Of all that damnable luck! Then we have no other choice, dear boy. We must follow her wherever she went. I will attempt to use my own magic to see if I can attune it to the same location Huridus traveled to. And... You want Deacon to follow, too? It is a dangerous task, lad. But if you're up to it, your help would be greatly appreciated. Agreed. But Deacon no hero. How he help fight powerful sorceress? You've been a faithful companion to Liam so far, haven't you? You said so yourself. That means you've power enough to stand on your own. And as far as being a hero, lad, let me tell you something. They're not made with size and strength. Heroes are made with courage, and I think you've plenty. Hell, I once heard tale of a, of a mighty halfling who managed to become a great hero and save a world. Wasn't this one, though? 
Uh, having to do with some great evil. Some terrible ring, I think. But regardless. I... Deacon go with you, then. Deacon fight, too. Deacon gots to finish epic story, anyway. I'm honored, little one. In the meantime, you look around this place and see if you can find some way to activate this portal. With luck, we can be on top of Eurydice before she has the time to prepare. What if we go through the portal but can't get back? That's... possible. I have to think, however, that Eurydice would not have gone wherever she did if she believed there was no way back. And even if it turns out there is no way back and my teleportation magics do not suffice... <sighs> Liam, we must do this. There is no time for others to intervene. Either we stop her, or no one does. How are we supposed to defeat her once we are there? With sword and spell if need be, dear boy. We are both capable fighters. With luck, she will not be able to resist us. And if she is, Garrick suggested an avenue which I do not wish to take, but will if I must. If Eurydice proves too powerful, then we must destroy the Mythalar. That would release the power within it all at once. Enough to destroy Eurydice as well as whatever ruin she has discovered. For good. And what would happen for, to us? I am prepared to die to stop her if need be. She already tried to kill me once, after all, and even if that wasn't the case, whatever her plan is, I cannot allow it to come to fruition. If it comes down to destroying the Mithalar, I will do all I can to send you somewhere elsewhere first, Liam. I promise you that. Thank you. I appreciate that thought, at least. It's the very least I could do, Liam. I hope it does not come to that. Go then, lad, and find a way to activate this portal. Quickly, now! Alright. Well, we do know one thing. This crystal ball... Someone told us somewhere... This crystal ball will basically allow us to see... There's apparently several levers we're supposed to pull or something. And this ball will show us the order in which to pull them. Unfortunately, it has a flaw. Peering into the crystal ball, you saw another room. It is a room with a torch in it. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing. From what we were told, the rooms all look exactly the same. But I think... Since that allowed us to see something, I have an idea. An idea that could make this a bit easier. We've got a bunch of items here. They're all the same. If we had multiple different items, it would be easier, but... If we can drop one of these in certain locations, we'll be able to know which room is which. Alright, so I'll drop one here. Alright, that's going to be on that side. We don't need these, so we can leave these after. Directly in front. The room it showed, it really didn't show much of the room. So we'll need to make sure that they're in the right spots. This one will go here. Now let's take a look in the other room. This is gonna be a lot of running back and forth, but it should work. the room with the torch is over on the... Nope, this is the room with the torch. So this is the first one to press. Your magical energies activate in the portal room beyond. Okay. So we may as well put the torch in this one just to get it... just to get it done. Torch is dropped. And this last one, we'll leave on here. A 
Alright, so we have the first one pressed. Now we're going to need to run back and constantly do the next one. And through this, we'll find out what we need to know. There, the first one is activated. What's the second room? The one with the one directly in front. That's over here. This one should be the second one. Your magical energies activate. Good. Alright, what's the third one? Third one is... Ah, upper left. Same side. This is how we do this. And the next one is over here. Right there. Alright, next one. Number four is the one with the uh, slotty down in the corner. This is there. Okay. Kind of wish I had like a perma haste on or something. You know, another way to do this would be to like grab all of the. Uh, all the parts basically drop a different item in each location because armor has an appearance each individual weapons have a specific appearance when you drop them on the floor the torch has a specific appearance as you saw that's another way to do it instead of putting it in specific locations okay that is over here and I'm pretty sure I know where the last one is The last one is probably the one with the torch. So I'm not even going to bother looking. This last one will finally activate the portal. And from there we'll be able to go on. I only wish there wasn't so much running around. We got experience, so it must be done. Yep, it looks like it's done. The portal is activated. Cutscene. What's happened? Shortages has laid an insidious trap within the portal's magic. I've never sensed anything of its like before. Discover it. And now it is activated. The portal is sealing, and these ruins are caving in. I, I can hold the portal open for only a short time. Quickly, you must go through. Aren't you coming? I cannot. By holding the portal open, I bear myself to the energies of Jordan's trap. I will die, but that does not matter now. It is up to you now. You must see this through. Remember the Mithamar. Destroy it only if you have to, but Jordan's must be stopped. No, you can't do this. There must be some other way. There is no time to look for another way. I must stay. Go. I am an old adventurer, far past his glory days. You have your whole life ahead of you. I can only hope you will use it well. I am proud to have taken a 
Deacon, what is it? Is... Is Old Dwarf Wizard... Does he really be dead? Yes, I think he is. But... When he sends us through Magic Portal, he knows he going to die? Did Dwarf Wizard sacrifice himself for Deacon? He saved us both, Deacon. Why, is that so surprising? Nobody ever does anything like that for Deacon before. You'd be very good to Little Deacon, but Dwarf Wizard, he dead now. It, it is just, Deacon not knows how to, now how to write this an epic story of boss. Write that Drogon died as he lived, a hero. He won't soon be forgotten. Okay, Deacon writes that. That sound good. And now we are someplace else. And we not be able to go back? Deacon thinks we'd be close now to end. He keeps pen ready just in case. Alright, Deacon. Come on. It's very dark here. Oh. This statue feels cold to the touch. Great. The last time we found a statue... Last time we found a statue. Oh, hello! Asabi? They look like lizard men. The last time we saw statues, we were dealing with, uh, what were they called? Basilisks. So this doesn't look promising. statues here. Many of them wielding weapons. They were attacking someone, or something, when they turned to stone. We do have that potion that can turn things back. Looks like on this side there were a lot of uh, stingers. On the other, and the sound of doom was nigh. Doom, 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 doom. We're close. I just want to take a look on the other side. I want to use this potion and try and bring one of those back. Maybe they'll be willing to talk. Not the stingers. The stingers would be hostile. That one looks like a looks like a crag cat or something. That would definitely be hostile to us. What about the other side? One of these humans, maybe. Definitely not the ogre, but let's try one of these humans. See what happens. Okay, he's hostile. Yeah. Peace, fight the enemy. 
And I ended up killing that one, too, somehow. Okay. So the people in these statues are hostile. Good to know. I guess we shouldn't bother with any of them. That said, I think perhaps it's time to save before we actually go into the ruined temple here. As this appears to be where we need to go to deal with this Huridus. But that'll be in the next episode. So, until then, I'm Tresser44. That is Liam Johnson and Deacon. This has been a Let's Play of Shadows of Undrin Tide. And I shall see you all next time.